Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a red-green deck called Blood Lotus as it tries to combine the 3 mana enchantment Blood Sun with the newly printed Lotus Field from M20. So the way the combo works is we've got Blood Sun, a 3 mana enchantment from Rivals of Ixalan that hasn't seen a ton of play. When it enters the battlefield we get to draw a card and then all lands lose all abilities except mana abilities. So this could shut down opposing lands but the major combo is of course with Lotus Field which now doesn't require us to sacrifice two lands when it enters the battlefield also comes into play untapped and it also loses Hexproof, which is a small drawback, but it doesn't matter too much, since opposing Field of Ruins also lose all abilities, so they can't use that to destroy the Lotus Field. So yeah, Lotus Field just turns into a land that comes into play untapped, and then can tap for 3 mana of any one color, so pretty powerful combination. So that's the major combo we're trying to assemble, Blood Sun plus Lotus Field to make tons of mana, and then spend that mana on a big Voracious Hydra, maybe use the Cavalier's ability to pump the team, and uh, kind of go off that way as well. And we have quite a bit of redundancy to help us find the missing combo pieces with four copies of Bond of Flourishing, which lets us take a look at the top three cards of our library. We can reveal a permanent card from among those, put it into our hand, and we also gain three life. So this can both find the Lotus Field as well as the Blood Sun, and the life gain is also nice against the more aggressive decks. And all the cards in the deck except for four Bond of Flourishing and four Lava Coil are permanents, so the hit rate on Bond of Flourishing is quite high. Then we also have the full playset of Elvish Reclaimer, which is also quite synergistic in this deck. One mana for a 1-2, gets plus 2 plus 2 as long as there are 3 or more land cards in our graveyard. And for 2 mana, tapping the Reclaimer and sacrificing a land, we can search our library for any land card, put it on the battlefield tapped. So there's a lot going on with the Elvish Reclaimer. The most straightforward application is that it helps us find the Lotus Field. Especially if we already have a Blood Sun in play, we can just sacrifice a land, search up Lotus Field, comes into play tapped, but then on the following turn can tap for 3 mana, which is quite powerful. Then Lotus Field itself also synergizes quite nicely with the Reclaimer, since if we sacrifice 2 lands, that's going to get us closer to the 3 lands in the graveyard to make Reclaimer into a 1 mana 3-4, which turns it into a nice beatdown creature. And then if there's ever a board stall, we can just keep sacrificing lands to the Reclaimer to then thin out our deck of lands so our top decks become better. And it's also going to fuel Cavalier of Flame, which we will get to in a second. So let's take a look at our entire deck list at 1 mana. Besides Elvish Reclaimer, we also have the full playset of Lanar Elves to speed things up, helping us cast turn 2 Bloodsun or turn 2 Kiora, which is quite powerful. Then at 2 mana, we've got our full playset of Bond of Flourishing, as well as 4 copies of Lava Coil as a removal spell of choice, dealing 4 damage to a creature, as well as exiling it if it would die. And of course on turn 2, if we don't have anything else going on, we could also maybe activate Elvish Reclaimer to put more lands in the graveyard. Don't want to sacrifice a land on turn 2 and search up a Lotus Field, because then we're going to be forced to sacrifice Lotus Field to itself. But uh, as soon as turn 3, we can start sacrificing lands and search up Lotus Field with the Reclaimer in play. Then at 3 mana we've got the full playset of Cura, Behemoth Beckoner, which is also very synergistic in our deck. Whenever a creature with power 4 or greater enters the battlefield under our control, we get to draw a card. And all the curve toppers in this deck usually have power 4 or more. Side note on Voracious Hydra, if X isn't equal to 4, then uh, even if we double the counters on the Hydra, it doesn't trigger Cura. But as soon as X is 4 or more, it's going to work quite nicely with Cura as well. And then the minus one untapping target permanent is quite powerful in this deck, especially combined with Lotus Field. Since we can untap Lotus Field with Cura, we essentially get to make three more mana with Cura, which is quite powerful. And then can also untap creatures if we need to play defense with them. Just a pretty versatile card in general, and draws us quite a few cards with all those four powered creatures we have in the deck. Then of course we've got the full playset of Blood Sun to combine with Lotus Field. Then at 4 mana we've got our full playset of Rekindling Phoenix as a nice 4 power flyer to trigger Cura to draw additional cards. Pretty resilient against removal spells as it will turn into an 0-1 elemental token that then gets back the Phoenix from the graveyard. So it requires multiple removal spells or an exile based removal spell to get rid of it permanently. And then of course Voracious Hydra we can cast at any point in our curve, but ideally we can cast it for X equals a lot, and it then enters the battlefield with X plus 1 plus 1 counters, we can either double those counters or make the Hydra fight an opposing creature as another removal spell. And then finally at 5 mana we've got the full playset of Cavalier of Flame, which ties the deck together nicely as a good curve topper, giving us a mana sink for 1 and a red, giving creatures we control plus 1 plus 0 oh and haste until end of turn. So that's a great way for us to play Rekindling Phoenix and then attack with it the same turn we played it, thanks to the Cavalier's ability. And we can of course activate this multiple times, pumping the entire team, which represents a ton of damage. 
And when the Cavalier enters the battlefield, we can discard any number of cards and then draw that many cards. So if we have a bunch of extra lands we don't need, we can turn those into actual spells. Lanerals in the late game aren't too useful. Or maybe a Lava Coil against a control deck, we can easily discard and turn it into additional action. And then when the Cavalier of Flame dies, it also deals X damage to each opponent and each Planeswalker they control, where X is the number of lands in our graveyard. So that also plays quite nicely with Lotus Field and with the Elvish Reclaimer. And of course, if we discard lands to the Cavalier, that's another way for us to put lands in the graveyard. So yeah, the Cavalier does a lot of different things in this deck, and it's the perfect curve topper to have access to. And then taking a look at our mana base, we've got 4 basic mountains, 8 basic forests, and alongside 4 stomping ground that gives us 12 untapped green sources for the different elves, as well as 4 rootbound crag, and the full 4 copies of Lotus Field. So that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Hand seems fine, we've got all the combo pieces here, Lotus Field, Blood Sun, Cura, just don't have the turn 1 ladder elves. I guess I'll bonds, since we kind of want to find some more cards here. I'll land will do for now. Next turn we could play Blood Sun. Or we could play Kyura, and then go Blood Sun into Lotus Field. We're definitely going to do some powerful things here. Question is if we get the time to set up. Next turn, the decision is basically whether we not want to play Kyura or if we want to play Bloodson first. So I guess playing Bloodson now makes more sense. That's not so bad. Alright, time to do some cool stuff. So let's play this here Lotus Field. Let's play Kyura. So I can go Cavalier. Not sure if I want to play this Lunar Elves. Might be better off just discarding it to the Cavalier's ability. Not sure here. I guess I'll see first what I draw from Kyura before we decide. I, I guess I can play one of them. So ditch those. Alright, so next turn we're gonna be able to do some more cool stuff. Still at 12. So, feel pretty confident in this game. Although that was a good one. Flame of Kel to refuel. Pretty strong with electrostatic field in play if they get to the third chapter. But yeah, they don't have any attacks. Alright, so another Lotus Field. So you can make 9, 10, 11, 12, 30 mana. So I want to be able to play a Hydra and give it haste with Cavalier. Could also play Phoenix and Hydra and give everything haste. Because if I use the ability from Cavalier in response to the fight, then it's still big enough to kill the field, which I think is the most threatening card. Play Phoenix first. Draw a card, sure. Then play Hydra, X equals 3. I hope I did the math correctly. Go full control here. I guess I could have done X equals 4, actually. That's fine, I can still Lava Coil then. So, in response to the trigger... I want to activate Cavalier. We kill the fields. And then I can Lava Coil the Chain Whirler. And then attack with everyone that now has hastes. 
Maybe I should keep something back. Yeah, let's keep this back, I guess. Alright, so not a bad turn. And that's why Cavalier is such a strong mana sink in this deck. Being able to give all future creatures haste as well, after discarding a bunch of useless lands and blood suns that we no longer need. So yeah, they're super dead here. Alright, let's make some mana. We'll take our time here. Let's get moving. Green, green. So X equals 9. I guess it should have been 10. Whoops. Oh well. Double. Resolve. Gotta use every part of the buffalo here. That didn't really accomplish much, but... Attack all. And our opponent explodes. Alright, not bad. The only awkward interaction in this deck is that you can't use Reclaimer turn 2 to find a Lotus. You have to wait until turn 3. I think I just bond to hit my land drop for next turn. And then we can go Blood Sun and to find a bunch of Lotus with the Reclaimer. Should have probably attacked first, but that's fine. So that's going to set us back a little bit. Up against Teamer Elementals. So, yeah, now we're a bit behind because we would like to play Blood Sun and then had a Reclaimer in place to get Lotus Field the turn after. Now if we play Reclaimer, we can't use it right away. And we can go Bloodstone Activate Reclaimer the turn after. So I guess we just play the Bloodstone for now. And take it from there. Well, that was a good draw. So now we get to play a pretty chunky Hydra. Probably gotta kill the Risen Reef. Could also play it for one less and then play Reclaimer. I guess one less makes sense, so we can use Reclaimer to find more Lotus. So we'll do X equals uh, 3 here. Alright, that Lotus Field definitely helped. Next turn we can activate Reclaimer, find a Lotus, and play a big Hydra. Or we can Bond and set up for an even bigger Hydra to turn after. Kinda depends what our opponent presents. Looks like they're gonna kill the Hydra after all. Alright, so let's activate Reclaimer. So 
So yeah, we'll just set up for a big Hydra next turn, which is fine. It's possible I should have bonded first before searching with Reclaimers, since I maybe still wanted to draw a Lotus Field. But that's okay. Alright, so our opponent gets to keep Omnath in play for a turn. And next turn we can play Hydra for X equals... Uh, let's see, 9, 10 mana total, so X equals 8. That's pretty big. Living Twister, that's fine. And I don't know if the Elemental deck has a great answer to a big Hydra. I guess they can do that for a while. To pump Omnath. That's fine. Well, top decking more Hydras is pretty good here. So yeah, X equals 8. And maybe the next one will just make enormous... So let's see, 4, 5, 6, 7, they still can't trade for the Hydra. Let's just go face and play another Hydra, X equals 9, double it. Should be game. Alright, well, not bad, not bad. Uh, not an exciting hand, but I guess we'll keep. So do we play second Reclaimer, or do we sack the first one? I guess I want to play another Reclaimer first, since it's a bit too soon to get uh, the Lotus, otherwise we'll have to sack itself. But next turn we could get Lotus. Comes into play tapped, so we can't use the mana right away. And Reclaimer's now three fours, so pretty beefy. I imagine this will get countered when playing the Simic Flash deck. So now if we draw Cura, we get to make more mana with the Lotus Field, for example. Now we're kind of into the Ambusher territory. So I guess playing Cavalier pre combat makes sense, because if they counter it, then we know we can attack with the Reclaimers. If they don't counter it, then... We can maybe only attack, or uh, just not attack at all. And if they Frilled Mystic, we can still attack with both. Right, Syncopate's fine. Put us down to 6. So 
so I guess now we attack with both if they ambush her. We, sure, they eat a Reclaimer, but we get to Lava Coil plus play another Reclaimer. That seems okay. And now we have two lethal threats for next turn. And our point explodes. Sweet. Alright, and seems fine. Reclaimer finds Lotus Fields. We've got the Blood Sun already, and then Hydra as a curve topper. Yeah, control matchups aren't great. I don't think they're unbeatable by any means. Since we do have cards like Cura drawing us more cards, Phoenix that's sometimes resilient, although not the best against the Fairy. And uh, Cavalier with haste that can deal a ton of damage out of nowhere. Cavalier can also discard or dead cards in the matchup, like or four copies of uh, Lava Coil. So we do have some tools in the matchup, but it has to line up properly. What are we doing here? Probably just play another Reclaimer. It's a little bit too early to start activating Reclaimer, I think. I mean, it would maybe set up to grow the Reclaimers over time, but I think this is okay for now. Just use the Reclaimers to ramp. So yeah, next turn I could double activate Reclaimers, find two Lotus, and then set up for a Giant Hydra the turn after. The Vampire deck could have like main deck Mortifies. What other removal do they typically play? They don't have that much removal nowadays, so it could be worth it. Phoenix is good too, but I kind of want to set up for big Hydra. So next turn we would have uh, 9 mana which is enough for Phoenix and Hydra for 3, or Hydra for 7. I guess I'll play Phoenix for now, just kind of as a, a roadblock. And then we'll ramp next turn, hopefully. I can go Lunar Elves, double activate Reclaimers. Just gonna block if they want to pump, that's fine by me. So we wasted their entire turn. Unless they have a disfigure, we still get our Phoenix back. Alright, so it's time to go big. Play the Lanor Elves, say go. And then next turn, it's uh, Hydra time. And the Reclaimers are also gonna get Swole pretty soon here. Not right now, but once we activate them a third time since the Lotus is not going to require a sacrifice. Right, Champion of Dusk makes sense. Opponent's going to draw some cards. And get our Lotus. Alright, so how much mana do we have here? 6, 9, 10, 11. I think I'll make the Hydra a little smaller just so I can activate Reclaimer again. 
That seems reasonable. So... X equals 7. Could also fight one of their creatures, but... If the opponents remove a light, I feel like just going double is going to be better for us. And then probably still keep Phoenix back. It is tempting to attack them, but... I think we might need the extra defense in case they do kill the Hydra somehow. Of course, this can gain Death Touch, so that's a way of beating the Hydra, but we're going to trample over for a ton. We're kind of banking on the Vampire deck, just not having a ton of removal in their deck. They usually only have like two or three answers to a potential Hydra in their deck. But there's one of them, sadly. Alright. So this Bond is going to have to find us some more finishers, basically. Find another Lotus. Lava Coil, it's not the worst. I guess I'll take another Phoenix. And then... Probably want to Lava Coil the Knight. Do I attack with the Rekindling Phoenix if her opponent plays Legion Lieutenant? I'm gonna take a ton of damage, but we do want to start attacking at some point, I guess. We'll still have a bunch of 3-4 blockers back, which are reasonable. I'm not sure if we're favored if the game stalls out, if her opponent finds another Champion of Dusk, for example. But I guess it would also... Costs a lot of life. I think I'm still gonna play it safe here and stay back and then just hope we top deck Cavalier, which can end the game very quickly. In the meantime, we can use Reclaimers a bunch more to thin out our deck. That's bad. Sends everyone. Well, we might not be dead. But we're in a bit of trouble. I guess this is okay. And then I can still use Reclaimers twice. If they have a pump spell, we're super dead, but I can't play around those. Get another Lotus. And I guess, like, a Stomping Ground, since that's a card we don't necessarily want to draw later in the game. But now we need to draw an answer for this Sanctum Seeker, otherwise we're dead. Should have maybe considered putting a stop on upkeep. To thin out the deck with Elvish Reclaimer before drawing. But the problem is, if we tap the Reclaimer to thin out our deck, then... We're also gonna have one fewer blocker. Yeah, I think we just gotta draw. Alright, that's good. There's Cavalier. We've got 4 times 3, 12 mana. So we can play Cavalier and activate it 3 times. Is that enough? 
I think we're like a couple points short because they can also block. They have three blockers for the three, but we might force them to jump with the Sanctum Seeker, which I guess is good. So you can play Cavalier. And then activate it, activate it, activate it. So these hit for 14 by themselves. So your opponent has to jump, and I guess we're at 6, so we're not dead. 2 5 damage on the way back. Alright. So this game couldn't be any closer. We're at virtually one life if they have Legion Lieutenant were dead. Wow. If they had another Sanctum Seeker, we would have been dead. If they had Surin, we would have been dead. There were a lot of cards we lost to there. That was a sweet game. So this hand's a little clunky, but we've got Blood Sun and Lotus Field and Cure to untap Lotus Field, so... I think we gotta keep and then hope we draw a basic land or stomping ground. So these root bounds don't come into play tapped all the time. This hand could make a ton of mana. The dream start with this deck, I think, is turn one Lander Elves, turn two Blood Sun, turn three, or I guess turn two Kiora could also work, and then turn three Lotus Field on tap with Kiora, make a bunch of mana, play Cavalier or something. Sadly, we draw the third root bound here, so that's unlucky. All right, so a bit of off to a slower start here. And there's Cavalier. Don't really want to play Lotus Field without playing Blood Sun first, so we'll bond and try and maybe hit a land. Uh, I guess I'll take another Lotus Field. And then next turn... I can go Blood Sun into Lotus Field into Cura. And then a turn after Lotus Field again, play Cavalier, do some stuff. Luckily our opponent is also not off to a blazing fast start, playing the Elves on turn 2 instead of turn 1. And a Paradise Druid. Alright, so next turn I can make some mana. But it's uh, blood some time. I could play Hydra for one, which I guess kills the Lanner Elves. So it's not embarrassing. When we have double Cavalier in hand, maybe that's actually worth it. Just to slow the opponent down a little bit. Yeah, let's do it. Hydra for one. We're living the dream. The tiniest Hydra. And yeah, next turn we'll have access to 6, 9, 12 mana. Not bad. Alright, it's gonna be Hydroid Crisis for 2. And a backup Cura. All right, so we'll play Lotus Field. And then I guess for now we can just play Cavalier. No need to untap anything with Kiora yet. I'll draw first from Kiora. Then I'll discard some Kioras. Ooh, another Lotus Field. We're definitely doing it here. So let's... Play Phoenix, and then I can untap a land, give everything haste. Attack with all. 
And next turn we get to go Lotus Field into another Cavalier, pump our team with Cavaliers a bunch. And uh, yeah, I don't think our opponent's beating that. Well, this is one of those draws where the synergies just come together and we get to see some of the busted things our deck is capable of. Alright, um, don't have a Blood Sun or a Lotus Field, but the Reclaimer can find a Lotus Field. And even without a Blood Sun, finding a Lotus Field with a Reclaimer, untapping it with Cura can make some mana. We're missing a Curve Topper, so Rekindling Phoenix, Cavalier, Hydra. But I don't think we can Mulligan. We've got enough of the pieces here that this hand could work. With turn 2 Cura, for example, being pretty strong. Opponent with Gruel Guild Gates, either a Gruel or a Gate deck. It looks like Gruel with a Leafkin Droid, so they've got some elementals. Alright, let's uh, play Cura. And then next turn we can get a Lotus Field maybe. Untap it with Cura, play Lava Quill or Bond. Ooh, Omnath. It's pretty good. Kills Reclaimer. Or Lana Elves, we'll see. Alright. I think I prefer this outcome. Alright, so gotta make sure to play our land first, since we have to sack a land to the Reclaimer and then two more to the Lotus Field. So I guess we'll play the forests. Sack two more lands. Oh, I should have floated one mana here in response to the trigger. That was bad, because now I can't play both spells. And of course we don't want to be sacking the Lotus Field. So I should have gone full control or just floated the mana beforehand. Oh well, I guess we missed out on one mana. And I guess I'll kill Omnath for now. So we've got a 3-4 Reclaimer. Vivian. Alright, it's not too bad. So now we're just hoping to find some beefy creatures with a bond. Wish we had been able to play it last turn. Not a reclaimer's not bad though. So we'll bond. I guess we'll take another reclaimer. And then just for now, double reclaimer. No need to untap anything with Cura then. So we have a bunch of 3-4s, and yeah, we're just waiting for one of our payoff cards. Risen Reef is scary. So yeah, finding a Phoenix is going to be pretty important this game to fly over, since the ground is going to get pretty stalled up. Although 3-4 does a reasonable job of holding the fort here as well. Eh, that's a good one. So let's make a bunch of mana. What are we killing? Probably the Risen Reef. X equals 6. Draws card with Cura. And then 
fight the Risen Reef. And let's try and kill this Vivian. Alright, so that was a good turn. Also important to note is that Reclaimers at 4 Toughness survive Chandra, dealing 3 to everything. And that's one of the heavy hitters in the opponent's deck, most likely. And back up Vivian. I've lost so much already. I won't lose more. Yeah, Vivian could have also destroyed Blotson had we drawn one. But for now it's just an expensive way to find a creature. Since we can probably kill it next turn. I've seen things that would break someone like you. Vivian Plosses. Finds another Omnath. It's probably one of their better cards here. Another Trailblazer. Alright. Ooh, hello. That's a good draw. So, let's uh, think for a second. Can just play Cavalier. See what we draw. Definitely discarding Kiora, and then maybe discard whatever we draw. And then we can untap land and pump the team. So I want to make sure the Cura trigger resolves first. And I think we can discard both. If we keep land, we can activate Cavalier twice, but we're also kind of likely to draw land anyway. Right, Lanner Elves and Hydra instead. Fair enough. So I'll have to make a red mana so we can't play the Elves and give it haste. That's okay. Do we just go face with everyone? Because attacking Vivian might set us back a little bit. Maybe that's the way to go, just go face with everyone. This is a lot of damage. And then next turn we still have a Hydra. They could kill Kiora, which kind of reduces the amount of mana we can make. But uh, I think we'll still be okay. Yeah, by going face, we also make Omnath quite a bit worse. Well, Ponon just triple chumps, that's good for us. Not sure why they chumped the uh, Reclaimers instead of the Cavaliers. No one knows the wilds like I do. Finds Risen Reef. Don't think that's going to be enough. Yeah, Cavalier of Flame is yeah, definitely a powerful card in this deck. And Omnath is not going to be powerful enough to take down the Voracious Hydra. They could have also gone face, I think. But yeah, opponent explodes, blots on the draw, but not necessary. Sweet, so beat up on Teamer Elementals. So the small sequencing mistake there of not floating mana before using Reclaimer did not end up costing us too dearly, and we got kind of bailed out by some powerful top decks. That's going to be it for me today. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.